Hi, and welcome back to another video in our employment series. So you've had a good look around, you've had a rootle about, you found a job, and now you've got to apply. This video will give us some advice on how to make an effective application. Hi, Gigi, how are you? Hi, Colin, I'm good, thank you. Are you well? Oh, not too bad, not good. too bad. So we've done a, uh, a bit of a, a job stick. Uh, a job seek, a job search, and uh, we're going to apply for a job that we found. So, yeah. how do we go about that? So, as we discussed earlier um, uh, in previous videos, you can, you know, the employer will will ask you in various ways to um, apply for a job. So, it can be with the CV, it can be a CV with the cover letter, and now obviously it can be um, application form, filling out an application form that we're going to talk about today. So. Um, the application form is a document that you will be emailed, hopefully, uh, by the employer if they want to post it to you or they want to give you any information that isn't in your accessible format, please um, uh, feel free to let the employer know what your uh, format is, but hopefully they're going to employ, um, so, sorry, hopefully they're going to email it to you. And the application form is basically is the document where you can sell yourself to the employer, your skills, abilities and knowledge. Um, in my opinion, the application form has two parts to it. I call them the um, exciting part and the boring part. I'm not sure. <laughs> if, I'm not sure if the the wording are um, 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 good, but that's how I call them. So the boring part is always the same: is your name, your address, your details, your date of birth, your you know your qualification, your uh, previous employment history. And obviously, anybody who's done an application form uh, will know that the um, employer wants to know the same uh, in all of the application forms. But because the format of the application form is different, you have to type it out every single time. Mm -hmm. So the boring part is the part where it's just your details, there's nothing to add to it, and it just needs to be either retyped or copy-pasted from previous application forms. And the exciting part that I think is the exciting part is obviously the statement part, where the yeah. employer says, please tell us you know, why you're applying for this position, and then sometimes they have some uh, additional information, and please, please, please read that additional information. So sometimes they say no more than one page is long, sometimes they say no more than 10,000 um, character or a thousand yeah. words whatever is their requirements please try to fit but no, don't try it do it because if you go over then obviously um, your application form will end up in the deleted um, uh, inbox straight away so whatever the employer is asking you to do please follow their instruction is absolutely crucial so um most people, when they get to the statement part, they, I don't know, go and make a coffee, a tea, have a glass of something, and they never come back to it because they just don't know how to fill out that part. It's yeah. really, really yeah. difficult. But I would just like to say now there is a way to do it. There is actually a, a structured way to fill out that part. And once you uh, watch this video, hopefully you're going to feel so much better in the future doing that part of the application form uh, because it's, it's relatively simple. It's time consuming, no two ways about that, but it is relatively simple in terms of how to fill that section out, that blank page that's staring at you. So <laughs> number one you need when you're filling out an application form, you need to have what we call a person specification from the employer. So it's a separate document that usually you've been emailed uh, when you were, um, you know, received the application pack. So actually on that note, can I just talk about the application pack for a second? Is that all right? Yeah. So sometimes the employer will send you a pack, so various documents. So the documents, the pack should have obviously the application form, uh, a legal opportunity monitoring form. It should have a person specification, a job description, and mostly has a letter um, uh, addressed as their candidate. So just a little bit of a brief information about the company. But when you applying for a job, a do it via an application form, what you need to have is two documents, is the application form itself and the job description. If you don't have the job description, sorry, person specification, so sorry, if you don't have the person specification, you cannot fill out the application form um, 
in the way that it's supposed to be filled out. So mm. one of the first thing you need to do before you you start the application form, you need to uh, uh, read to the person specification. And you need to really ask yourself, do I need that, whatever the employer is asking for? So yeah. the person specification will have different um, criteria like essential and desirable, and they would list, uh, um, they would list uh, skills, abilities, experience, and knowledge that they would like the idea candidate to have. So his ability to do things, experience of doing things, willingness, that kind of words you will find in the job description, uh, sorry, person specification. Um, so one of the things you need to do is you just need to read that document and ask yourself, do you meet it most yeah. of it? most of it, 80, 85%. And then going back to previous videos, you can meet those points or criteria, as I call them, from voluntary work, from personal life, previous work experience. So if you feel that there is any criteria that you really don't meet and is absolutely essential, please don't even apply for the job you are wasting your time. So if the first criteria, let's say, is uh, you have to have a degree, to fulfill this job requirement and uh, you don't have a degree, don't even waste your time, you're not going to get a job. So the first thing is the person specification, do you meet it more or less? Um, I don't want to say you have to meet it 100% because I just don't think that we would, even I or you, if we would apply for our jobs now, maybe that is one thing we haven't really done or we're not that experienced. So, Finding a job, uh, a person specification that's hundred um, percent about us it's, is is unrealistic. So it's, it's realistic now. 80, 85%, 90% if you meet it, you have a good chance of applying. And then obviously, uh, as we talked about previously, just uh, really think on your um, think of your uh, transferable skills and, and fill up the gaps within with your transferable mm -hmm. skills. So when you have the statement, um, sorry, the, um, the, the blank page in front of you, uh, most people just start writing about themselves, about whatever they think employers want to know, is categorically the wrong thing to do. The employer only wants to know how do you meet the person specification. Yeah. So I'm talking about, I'm going to explain this in a way that maybe you don't have a limit. You can write as much as you want, but obviously if you have any limit, then you just need to bear that in mind. So if you don't, if you just have a, a piece of a blank page in front of you, my advice would be that from the personal profile, you copy paste every single criteria into the statement. You can bullet point them, you can highlight them, you can color them, you can number them, you can do whatever you want with them, but keep it in the same order. So if the person specification has 20 criteria, you copy paste all the 20 into the statement. And one by one, you tell the employer exactly how you meet that specific criteria. And then obviously, if you have limit in terms of how many wording or how much space you can use, that you delete the kind of the headings in there and then you just leave your answers in and you make sure it's flowing nicely. And you use words like in my last job and my current employment when I was working at, when I was a volunteer, when I was in university. And then you can kind of link up your um, statement really nicely. So if you have 20 criteria. I would expect that your statement has 20 paragraphs at least. So one paragraph will um, explain one of the criteria from the person specification. And stating the obvious, it isn't enough um, for the employer. And we need to go back to the session of when we talked about interview skills. Again, in the application form, you need to use the STAR acronym, Situation, Task, Action, Result. So if the yeah. employer is asking questions like, uh, or asking, um, having a statement as a criteria, like ability to communicate effectively with others, Saying that I am very good to communicate with others isn't going to get you the job. You need to say I'm a very good communicator and maybe set, uh, maybe do a sentence on general communication and then give them a specific um, example when I was working or currently, you know, and then just give them an example maybe on a communication um, 
uh, a, a communication, a situation regarding communication that you have um, done really well. And one by one, you have to go through all the criteria. So when the employer is looking at your application form, they're going to be doing something which is called their shortlisting. So yeah. let's go with the 20 again. So you have 20 criteria. You tell the employer in the statement about 20 criteria. The employer, I bet you they're going to have a piece of paper in front of them and they, you're either going to get a tick or a cross for each criteria. And maybe they, their understanding is anybody who scores 18 will have an interview. So every single point is crucial. You can't miss anything out. If you really can't do something or you can't evidence that you can do it, then maybe talk about the willingness and maybe the understanding yeah. how would you do that particular task. You can own up to it that you haven't yeah. done it. It's not really the the good, best thing to do, but you can just say, I'm, I'm sure I will be able to do, I'm willing to learn about this, I would be happy to take some training on it and maybe that would get you the, the, the take that you need to have an interview. Great. So within that, person spec and using that person spec and then obviously filling out the personal statement is it a, a good idea to put your site loss in yes so uh, if if the employer sends you an equal opportunity monitoring form separately or there is a section on the application form regarding the, your site loss um, you're absolutely okay to disclose it there those questions at that stage are usually indicating what support you might need for the interview so they're just literally do you um, usually they say do you consider yourself a person with a disability yes or no and what support would you need for an interview so that's a perfect place to disclose it I wouldn't necessarily use terminology uh, mm -hmm. that is very defined like I wouldn't say I'm, I'm really totally blind I would just say you know sight impaired and that, that's a really nice um uh, Name for so many conditions and so yep. many state of sight loss that um, stages of sight loss. Sorry, that you know. Then, then obviously you will have a phone call anyway to say yes, you be, you've been selected for an interview. So how can we help you? And then you can go into a little bit more details. Um, but yeah, definitely is is, is okay to disclose uh, it at the uh, application form. But again, with disclosure, it's totally depending on each person. So if you want to disclose it, you can. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to disclose it at all. Okay. Can I just so, um, go back a little bit to the state bank? Sorry, oh, I forgot to mention yeah. something. So um, when when somebody is doing the first application form, their very first application form maybe, and they have 20 statements to do or 20 criteria, uh, I would like to make people aware that probably it will take you 20 hours to do that statement because one statement would probably take you an hour. They have to be very sharp, very down to the point mm -hmm. and, and, and just, you know, very um, um, think about always from the employer's point of view, they have to read through that. So you don't need to include your life story, just literally, this is how I'm communicating mm -hmm. well and this is when I've done it. That's, that's the key thing to it. Um, and then also, uh, if you're applying for similar position, the uh, person specification can be quite similar. So you yeah. might you might talk about your communication skills once. Please be free. Please feel free to reuse that segment or that that paragraph that you done for an application from two weeks ago, and yeah. a question comes up again. Please don't rewrite that or we don't re, uh, come up with the wheel all over again. Just use your previous um, statement, copy paste them all together. But one thing you really have to be uh, making sure that you do is that you re, re, reread the whole lot and make sure they are flowing. And please, yeah. please make sure you're using the employer's vocabulary. So if the employer, let's say you're going into what to work with people, you know, we can call them service users, we can call them clients. We can use them, I don't know, call them customers, consumers, all kind of names. So whatever is the employer's vocabulary, please use those words in your application form. And if you have a, a paragraph that you copy pasted from a previous application form, please make sure that in the context of this application form, it fits in. Yeah. And if it needs to be rewritten slightly, please do spend that couple of minutes because that's going to pay off. Yeah, your, your efforts. That's that's been a consistent theme, hasn't it? Through yes. CV, cover letters, and 
um, and now application forms. It's about making, checking and double checking that you're not, you're making yourself relevant and you're talking about the job that you're applying for. Yeah, and, and the last thing I would say, uh, it's going to sound a bit funny, I guess. Bending the truth in an application form is absolutely okay. I think we all done it maybe in the past. Maybe we, we tried to look a little bit uh, in a better situation than maybe we were, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning of our, of our careers. But plain lying is a no-no that you will get find out. Yeah. Yeah, so but what I mean by this, if they want you to do something uh, for two years experience and you have a, an experience, but it's only one and a half year, then please make it two years. That's absolutely fine. Like if they want you to have maybe team leading uh, responsibilities. Uh, but if you've never been a team leader, don't put it down that you were. Yeah. It's just not on. But yeah, slightly making yourself a bit more um I don't know. Um, capable is okay, but play line definitely isn't. Yeah, yeah. You will get you will get found <laughs> out. That's that's really <laughs> really good advice. <clears throat> that's uh, that's, um, that's great. So applica- a- applying for a job is 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 a, it's a time consuming thing to do, but it's well yeah. worth doing it. And um, and as you sort of mentioned in the CV um, writing uh, video, that once you've done it. Um, you've done it and you've got maybe a supporting statement for some jobs sitting there then you can copy and paste and it becomes a little bit more quick and you can get into the yeah. habit of doing it uh, so um, what, are, what are your sort of top tips then to uh, to apply for a job so, um, same that I said with the CV and cover letter please make sure if you're attaching the application form to your name that you rename the document accordingly your name what's the document is the date the company the job you're applying for so it's again just easier for in case that goes to a HR person it, it would be easier for them to forward your job to the relevant person who's actually recruiting uh, do read the person specification and have a really good idea whether you are actually the person more likely for that job and before you sit down and start typing things away uh, for hours and hours, uh, maybe do a little timetable. So say, OK, I have 20 um, um, paragraph or 20 um, criteria to, to explain. Uh, maybe I'm going to do four a day and for five days and just give yourself some time to think it through exactly what you want to um, you know, put across. And don't forget that that's the document you're going to be judged on. So what's on it? is that you're going to be judged on and what isn't relevant to the job or to the skills so that they are asking, please don't put it down. And if you're still unsure whether you have um, answered the question correctly, again, friends and family can be really useful here. One of the exercises I, um, I ask my clients to do is take away the criteria or from the statement and just give them your answer and let your friends and family guess what the criteria is. So if the criteria is about communication skills, but they think you're writing about, I don't know, your um, uh, ability to actively listen, then maybe you haven't really grasped the, the, the criteria. So it's a good little check up um, um, kind of exercise to do to give other people to read your statement and think what, you know, do they think you have uh, met the criteria and what the criteria may be. Fantastic, Gigi. That's really good advice there, as always. Uh, so, if uh, again, if people want your support, they know where you are and they can of obviously course. contact yeah. me too. So, really, thank you for your time today. Thank you. So, that was Gigi Heibel from Support for Sight in Essex. All her details are at the end of this video. If you want to get hold of me and talk about employment in any way, you can get me through the Advice and Information Service on 0300 3030 111. The Working Age and Young People's Facebook group is there as well. And also this video will be alongside the others on our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.